this is okay so, so uh this is a slightly edited version of uh, the talk that i was supposed to give in copenhagen in july but i didn't make it so thank you for giving me a second chance anil uh, the talk is about uh, solid resolution, which is uh, an interesting phenomenon for uh, uh, concerned with asymptotic in time behavior of solutions of nonlinear wave equations. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, uh, before I talk about this, let's put it in a slightly more general context. So suppose you have a some evolution equation, which is uh, schematically written here. So you have some <clears throat> um, some function of time, u, and special variables, which evolves in time. And A stands for some nonlinear partial differential operator. And you start with some reasonable initial data, and you want to know what happens as time goes to infinity. And I'm assuming here <clears throat> that we know a priori that uh, all solutions enjoy global in time regularity. So, <clears throat> of course, uh, many complicated things can happen with a solution for intermediate times. But the key observation is that <clears throat> for many equations, the set of possible end states is, is much smaller than the set of, uh, post of of initial data. So it means that the map from a set of initial data to uh, a set of end states is, is highly subjective. So it means for each image, there are many, well, possibly infinitely many pre-images. And this is sometimes referred to, to as dynamical asymptotic simplification. And this phenomenon is very well known for uh, parabolic flows, like heat flow or Ricci flow. And the mechanism of simplification is, is, is uh, dissipation of energy, local dissipation of energy. But here I, I want to talk about this for nonlinear dispersive equations. And here the mechanism of simplification is different. And and this uh, simplification in this context is called soliton resolution. And, and soliton resolution conjecture, vaguely speaking, says that uh, globally in time solutions of nonlinear dispersive equations resolve asymptotically in time into a collection of some nonlinear bound states, which are here denoted by QI. Uh, which are asymptotic decoupled plus radiation. And uh, well, they are called soliton, these bound states, but this could be solitons, vortices, kinks, or, or, or black holes, for example. And it's crucial that this, uh, is, this happens on unbounded domains uh, because the mechanism for this uh, resolution is the escape of excess energy by radiation to infinity. So this uh, uh, is not conjectured to happen on, on bounded domains, where dynamics is much more complicated. Uh, this conjecture goes back to mid-60s, where this behavior was first observed for uh, 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 integrable models, like Codevec de Vries equation. Uh, but in, in the past decade, uh, there was a significant progress in understanding of this conjecture for uh, uh, non-integrable equations, in particular radial critical wave equations by Yendry, Lowry, Merle, and collaborators. So, uh, however, uh, I think it's fair to say that the that this be this phenomenon is not very well understood. So uh, this was the motivation for us to look at this in, in some 
very simple setting. Uh, well, I should say that there is uh, extensive uh, evidence in numerics that this conjecture is true, and there is also experimental evidence. So in the context of GR, the, 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 the most spectacular example of soliton resolution is a formation of a Kerr black hole in, in binary black hole collision. So, uh, so the end state is, is in fact, uh, extremely simple. So it's a Kerr black hole. So, so here is the outline, oh sorry, outline of my talk. I, I first uh, explain the model, which uh, is uh, uh, an equivariant wave map on a wormhole. Then I will talk about static solutions, which play a key role in understanding uh, uh, the l late time behavior in this model. So the static solutions play the role of solid solitons in this model. Then I will uh, shortly, oh, sorry. Then I will shortly talk about this in, in three dimensions. This is an old work I did with a student of mine and uh, as, uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and the same is true in, 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 in higher dimensions than three. Uh, and then the most of the talk will be focused on, on two dimensional case, which is much more complicated. And this is work in progress with Jacek Yendre, uh, uh, a mathematician in Paris and Maciej Maliborski, who is in Vienna. Uh, and many things I will tell you about remain true for young mills, uh, but just for concreteness, I, I, I will talk about wave maps only. Okay, so here, uh, so before I present the model, I remind you what is a wormhole. So, so this is, uh, so here we see a metric, uh, uh, on, a, on uh, defining a wormhole, it's an ultrastatic metric, uh, and there is some shape function f, which is supposed to be uh, the function f is supposed to be everywhere positive and have a single minimum, and the best, uh, well, the simplest example of this function is this uh, square root of r squared plus a squared, where a is some non-zero constant. Uh, which has uh, interpretation of the radius of the throat of the wormhole. So here uh, we have a isometric embedding. On the left is isometric embedding of the constant time slice, uh, which has two asymptotically flat ends and a throat of, of radius uh, A. And on the right, we have uh, this diamond is a conformal diagram representing uh, this space time with uh, and the sides of this uh, diamond correspond to future and past left and right uh, uh, null infinities. Uh, so so this will be my background. And on this background, I, I will put some nonlinear uh, uh, wave equation. And this will be a wave map. And a wave map is a map from a manifold to a Riemannian manifold, uh, which is a critical point of this action here. And this action is the simplest action you can write for a map which has values in a manifold. It's a just generalization of the square of the gradient. And, and if you vary this action with respect to x, you get the wave map equation or a system. It's a system of equations written here uh, where these capital gammas are Christoffel symbols of the metric on the target manifold. And, uh, now, <clears throat> we impose uh, some symmetry assumptions. 
on this equation to simplify it. So first as well, the domain in, in our case is a wormhole. And uh, the target is the D dimension sphere. So this is a wormhole in D plus one dimension. The target is the, is a sphere in D dimension uh, and the metric on, on, the, on the sphere is just a round metric. And then we assume a so-called equivariant ansatz, which means that the polar angle on, on, on the target sphere, U, is just a function of T and R, does not depend on angles on, on the domain, while <clears throat> the map between angles on the domain and the target is given by harmonic map, chi, with the index k, and, uh, which uh, counts the eigenvalues of this harmonic map. So this lambda k is, is this. And this k is, uh, is, uh, is just a, 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 an integer, a positive integer. And if you do this assumption, uh, then this system of uh, 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 equations simplifies to a single equation, which is written here. It's a single uh, semilinear wave equation uh, with this uh, nonlinearity. Now, <clears throat> There is this constant A here. If this constant is zero, then this is just a wave uh, wave map equation from Minkowski spacetime to a sphere, which has been studied extensively. And the problem with this equation uh, on Minkowski is then it can the solutions can develop singularities uh, in finite time. While if this, uh, in the case of wormhole background, there is no singularity at r equal zero, and this guarantees that solutions remain global in time uh, for any reasonable initial conditions. And also because of this constant A, the equation is no longer scale invariant because this A sets the scale. And just by choice of units, uh, uh, I set A to 1 without loss of generality. Now, it is convenient rather to use the, the special variable x rather than r, where r is a cinch of x. And this little u will be the function of t and x in what follows. And then this wave map equation in terms of t and x takes this form here. So, uh, so this uh, uh, has a conserved energy written uh, by, well, given here by this integral. Uh, uh, maybe I should say that uh, 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 this model is attractive uh, first because it has it is global, the solutions are globally regular. Uh, but it, but since x varies from minus to plus infinity, it really is a one dimension, one plus one dimensional equation. Uh, but the problem with one plus one dimensional equations, which are originally in one plus one dimensions, is that there is no dispersion in one plus one dimensions. So no decay, while this equation is one plus one dimensional, but it inherits decay from higher dimensions, uh, which is extremely helpful in the analysis. Okay, so this is the energy, conserved energy for this equation. And as you see from this uh, formula, there is this uh, potential term, sine squared, so for the energy to be finite, this term must go to zero at minus and plus infinity, which means that U must 
be a multiple of pi at plus and minus infinity. Uh, so, and without the loss of generality, I will assume in what follows that uh, that u is equal to zero at minus infinity, and it is equal to n times pi at plus infinity, and this integer n uh, corresponds to a topological degree of the map, uh, which is conserved in the evolution. So it means evolution uh, breaks into infinitely many topological sectors indexed by this degree. Okay, so so the goal is to understand uh, uh, what happens with solutions as time goes to infinity. Uh, and so so before I come to that, I I need to tell you about static solutions. So static so for static solutions, the left hand side here is zero. Uh, Note that this equation uh, does not have uh, any uh, 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 any obvious symmetry. So, in particular, it's not translation invariant. So, so st for st static solutions, we have just this ODE, and and this can be interpreted as describing, well, it's a, a simple mechanical interpretation. It describes a particle uh, moving in, in, in this potential. So this is like inverted pendulum, uh, but subject to friction, as long as D is, uh, is different than two. So we have a particle moving in such a potential. And suppose the particle starts at at uh, when x is equal to minus infinity at zero at this hilltop and we give it some velocity to the right so it 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 it, it rolls down and if it the, the 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 velocity is is small it because of friction it will never make to the this next hilltop it will end up here However, if the velocity is sufficiently large, the particle will roll over, over the hilltop at pi, and the story will, will, will repeat. So by continuity, there will be a critical velocity such that a particle starting from zero will end up at pi uh, when x, at in infinite time. And by the same, so this is elementary shooting argument for existence of the solution which goes from zero to pi, and we can repeat this argument to get a countable family of, of solutions which go to a multiple of pi, uh, as long as there is this friction, so d is bigger than two. Uh, and <clears throat> and uh, and it's it's easy to see that these solutions, uh, 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 which are usually called kinks, uh, are minimizers of energy for a given degree. And since they are minimizers of energy for a given degree, this implies they are stable in the Lyapunov sense. So it means if you perturb them, uh, then the perturbation remains small for all times. So this is uh, uh, what happens in dimension three and higher. In two dimensions, there is no friction. It's just a simple inverted pendulum equation. Uh, and in this case, if we consider solutions of degree one, we can write the following identity. This is the energy. And the energy can be written as a term, which is the square of, of this uh, first order equation plus uh, 2k. Uh, so this is obviously uh, uh, bigger or equal to 2k. And, and this inequality, well, it's an example of so-called Bogomolny inequality, is saturated. It means that this term, uh, uh, the integrant is zero if uh, u is equal to 
two times arcos tangent e to kx. So this is a kink solution. Uh, so in this case, the solution is explicit and uh, it's not a single uh, solution because in this case, this equation is scale invariant, is a translation invariant. So we in fact have a continuous family of, of kinks, which are just uh, uh, translations of this kink. And this constant C uh, uh, corresponds to the location of the kink. Uh, this is also a minimizer of energy. However, there are infinitely many, uh, well, all kinks have the same energy because of translation energy, which means that this is a degenerate minimizer of energy. So we cannot hope uh, for orbit uh, for Lyapunov stability, but uh, uh, one can show that this the kinks uh, uh, enjoy so-called orbital stability. So it means that if we have a kink and we perturb it, it will remain not to the kink that was perturbed, but to this uh, orbit uh, generated by the translation group. Uh, now, from this uh, uh, shooting argument, it is clear that in this case, in the absence of friction, there cannot exist solutions with higher degrees because if if this particle rolls over pi, over pi, it will uh, keep moving because there is no friction. So there are no solutions of degree higher than one. Uh, However, one can show that the energy in these higher degree sectors is bounded from below by uh, n times the energy of the kink, the energy of the kink, which is equal to 2k. So this is uh, uh, what I want to say about static solutions, which play the role of solitons in this model. Okay, now... <clears throat> Okay, now let's introduce, it's convenient to study this uh, using hyperboloidal foliation. So uh, this is a simple uh, choice. So I define a new time S, which uh, will give me the, the, the slices of constant S will be these hyper, hyperboloidal foliations. And then uh, uh, equation complicates a little bit. So the, the, the time independent part is the same as before, but here we have, well, as always, this uh, 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 mixed time derivatives and, and, and time derivatives respect to S. Now, there are general results for semilinear wave equations on asymptotically flat manifolds, which guarantee that for smooth initial conditions, the solutions enjoy asymptotic expansions at scry, which corresponds to left scry is x going to minus infinity, right scry x going to plus infinity. Uh, so these are the first terms of these asymptotic expansions. The higher order terms, so these are results by, by Piotr Khrushchev and collaborators and, and, uh, and, and Vasi and Hintz. And these are just first terms, the higher order, the, 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 the faster decaying terms may involve logarithm, logarithm of time. Uh, and this coefficient of the dominant term, in this case, B minus and B plus, uh, are usually called radiation coefficients. So in terms of original variable R, this will be just, uh, so for example, the, it's best known in three dimensions. When the, when, so these are just, just this term. The, so this term is just the coefficient in front of one over R at infinity. Uh, now, if I multiply this equation by, by, by a suitable multiplier uh, involving first derivative respect to S, uh, this equation becomes a, 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 a conservation law. 
uh, written here. And now I can integrate this conservation law over X from plus and minus infinity. And then I get the, the energy loss formula for this energy, uh, uh, which is different from the original energy. This is now a, a type of Bondi energy. Uh, and this energy is decreasing uh, due to radiation of energy uh, uh, through left and right scribe here. So the energy is monotone decreasing. Uh, it is bounded from below by, by a positive or non-negative constant. So it is guaranteed to have a limit which I denote by E uh, sub infinity. And the question is, what is this limit? So I want to emphasize, we are guaranteed this limit exists because we know that solutions exist globally in time. So, so here is what happens in three dimensions. So this is uh, this was first a conjecture and later became a theorem. It says that for any uh, smooth initial data of uh, degree n, uh, initial data with finite energy, we have a unique smooth global solution which converges to the kink in this topological sector as time goes to infinity. Uh, there was we first gave with um, Michal Kahl uh, 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 numerical evidence for this and and some uh, some heuristics and then this result was proved uh, in a PhD thesis by Rodriguez. Uh, however, the proof is abstract; uh, it does not give any rate of decay. So what is shown here is this numerical evidence. Uh, on the left, uh, you see some crazy initial data at time zero uh, in for a degree one from zero to pi. And, and these are uh, snapshots from later, uh, uh, for later times. And the red uh, curve corresponds to the the kink with index one. Uh, so this shows convergence to this. And on the right, this convergence is shown at some fixed point in X. I should say this Y Y coordinate. Well, in well, uh, uh, in in numerical simulations, we always of course, compactify the special domain. This is the great advantage of, of, of uh, hyperboloidal uh, uh, formulations that we can compactify the special domain and we don't need to impose any boundary conditions. Uh, so the Y is a compactified uh, special coordinate. So for some fixed Y, this is uh, shows some quasi-normal ring down to the to the kink and later some polynomial decay the tail and and these are all well understood and computed independently and the same thing happens in higher dimensions and three so uh, so this is so now let's talk about the the the, the, the more interesting situation which is a critical dimension, d equal to. And this is a work in progress with Jacek Giendry and Maciek Mariborski. And, and here is our conjecture. We conjecture that solutions either converge to zero, uh, which is possible only if the degree is zero, or they converge to a chain of kinks and anti-kinks, this chain is written here. It's a finite chain. The number of kink, um, I should say that uh, the kink is Q and anti-kink is just minus Q. So it's a, the equation has obvious uh, reflection uh, symmetry. So this is this uh, uh, chain. 
with uh, kings at different locations uh, described by these parameters cj which depend on time so the kings are moving uh, however the distance between two neighbors goes to infinity as time goes to infinity so in this sense the kings and and, and anti kings decouple so in this case the uh, asymptotic energy is equal to the number of kings and anti kings in the chain chain times the energy of a single king and this is 2n times k because the energy of the king is 2k however the number of kings and anti kings in the chain is in general greater than the degree n so capital n is n degree plus 2m and 2m is the number of pairs of kings and anti-kings that can be created in the evolution. And I, I should say that this uh, kind of result was previously proved rigorously by Yendre and Lowry for equivariant wave maps in from 2 plus 1 Minkowski space time into the 2 sphere. I said before that in this case, solutions can develop singularities, but, but, but there are also solutions which do not develop singularities. And, and they proved that they must converge to this uh, such end chain. However, this result is, is abstract uh, in the sense that it just says what are the possible end states of evolution but it is not clear at all if this the elem if if many elements of this set are not empty so so they are not never realized in the evolution uh, so this is a question of classification of possible end states so to 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 make things more concrete and uh, just as a first step, we consider just only degree zero and one first. So let me tell you what happens in this case. So these are the are some results of numerical simulations uh, performed by Maciek. Uh, Okay, maybe I still... So on the left, uh, you see the solution uh, uh, on a compactified domain. So in this case, minus one corresponds to left uh, uh, minus infinity, and this is right uh, in, uh, plus infinity. And so this is a solution, and this is time derivative of the solution multiplied by some factor. So, uh, and this is... So in this case, the solution just converges asymptotically to zero, right? So this is initial state and it was like converges to zero. Uh, and this is a, a slightly modified initial condition. You see, it, it evolves like this. Here we see creation of a pair. Here is a kink from zero to pi, and there is anti-kink from pi to zero. It's a pair of kink anti-kink. Uh, well, this, uh, this uh, plot, well, the, the shape of the kink is distorted. Uh, so the steep uh, slopes here, are just artifacts of compactif special compactification. So we see here the formation of the kink-anti-kink -kink pair 
uh, which uh, just uh, the king and anti-king keep moving away from each other. So this is the, and here the end state is just a pair of king anti-king. And, uh, and here is a similar picture for degree one. So you see here, what happens here is that, so we see, we can see here creation. So here we have a king, anti-king and king again. They move away from each other, but now you see they stop and start moving toward each other and they annihilate and form a single king. And finally, let me show you this. It's, it's a similar initial data, but in this case, the king and anti-king keep moving away and we have this configuration with uh, two kings and one anti-king. Uh, so, so we were interested, what is the, so we see that, uh, that for degree zero or degree one, uh, we can have uh, different uh, end states. And we ask ourselves, uh, what is the borderline between these generic behaviors? So, so what, what separates the basins of attraction of different end chains? And, and the key observation is that these solutions, which are at the threshold, are asymptotically static. Asymptotically static, it means that the kinetic energy the kinetic energy, the original true kinetic energy in T variable goes to zero. So this is a close, there is a close uh, to an analogy be between this behavior and just Newton's equation. Uh, well, for example, if you consider motion in, a, let's say, a, a, a one over minus one over R potential, you can have uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, or parabolic motions, and parabolic motions correspond to this uh, 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 zero uh, asymptotically static solutions, which divide hyperbolic and elliptic motions. So, and here the situation is, is, is similar. And again, let me mention that such uh, King anti king pairs in mathematical literature that are called bubbles uh, were constructed for the same model in Minkowski before we 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 look at this on the wormhole again by Jacek Lendre and and Andrew Lowry. So so the conjecture is that these are these critical solutions, threshold solutions, which uh, sit at the, at the boundary between generic motions. And, uh, well, some of them, well, they, they, the, the, shape, the, the, the shape of these chains depends on whether the, there is an odd or even number of solutions. So for degree one, we have an odd number of kinks and anti-kinks, uh, two capital K plus one. F for degree zero, we have an even number. So this is this chain. All these, all they all go to infinity with time and the distance between them, this is what means this, this symbol with uh, much less than, the distance between them goes to 
infinity. So this is an example for uh, uh, for k equal two, which means n equal five. There is a kink sitting at the center, which is stationary, and then there are, there is anti kink moving to the right and a kink moving to the right, and the same thing by symmetry to the left, and and this. Uh, so this is a configuration of five kinks and anti-kinks, uh, which is asymptotically uh, stationary. And we now want to understand the motion. So what are these parameters Cj? And, and, and here we do, we, we um, we employ so-called method of collective coordinates, which is uh, which is a very naive approach. It means that we take the ansatz like this here, and we plug these ansatz into the Lagrangian. This is usually what we teach students not to do. So, so we plug these ansatz into the Lagrangian and integrate over space. And, it, and by integrating over X, we just get a, a, a mechanical model. And in the limit, this is an extremely complicated, the result is extremely complicated, but since we are only interested in asymptotic regime, so it means when these parameters C uh, are very large, then this Lagrangian simplifies to this form at the leading order. So this is a kinetic uh, term and potential and a potential term. Uh, and if we go back to the R variable, which is e to cj, this becomes just a, a, a standard Lagrangian, a standard kinetic energy with a potential, but the potential is sl slightly uncommon. So, so that's the potential. And, and this can work, uh, as I will show you in a moment, only because the solutions are asymptotically static, uh, because this approach completely ignores radiation, interaction of kinks with radiation. And, uh, and radiation can be neglected only when we have asymptotically static solutions. Uh, so we have so now so now we have just this mechanical problem. Uh, these are equations of motion, a system of of uh, of k particles because everything is symmetric with respect to reflection. So this is a system, a mechanical system. It's like a k-body system on a half line. So we have k bodies on a half line. And all the moving to the right, the distance between them increases to infinity, and each of them goes to infinity. And one can solve this. Uh, uh, well, for k equal one, one can solve this. This is a trivial case. Uh, can solve exactly for k bigger than for k equal two or bigger. This can solve can be solved by perturbation methods, and these are solutions. So, so they, these particles, or if you wish, radii of circles, expand asymptotically uh, at this rate. So, so this is a, a, a formal. This is not a well. This uh, this is the first term of asymptotic expansion. Uh, so this is a formal result uh, for this ODE. And now we believe that this is, uh, we are on the right track because here uh, is a comparison for of PDE simulation with this ODE approximation. So ODE approximation is 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 formal, and we compare it with PDE numerics. So what is shown here, this is a solution as a function of time. 
for these specially prepared uh, initial conditions. The, the blue line corresponds to the location of the outer kink, and the red line is the inner kink. Uh, and uh, the dotted black line is the ODE approximation, and the dot, uh, the, the dashed, uh, this dashed black line is an ODE approximation, and here is the dotted line, also ODE approximation for these parameters. And you see uh, a very good uh, agreement between these curves. And here, well, so to get this PDE solution, one has to fine tune initial conditions. Remember, this is a non-generic solution sitting at the boundary between two generic behaviors. So one has to fine tune. The fine tuning is never perfect. So therefore, uh, after some time, you see uh, that this uh, kink uh, starts moving faster and faster for this curve or for the dotted curve uh, subcritical, it, it moves slower and slower. In this case, the, for, for the subcritical evolution, the, this kink will collide with the center in finite time. In this case, it will just collide with the outer kink. So, uh, so you see, we have K bodies and we, and the K bodies interacted, interacting with, by attractive, well, I should say, this is an attractive, there is attraction between these bodies. So if we don't fine tune initial conditions, uh, then uh, the, the attraction will lead to collision. And once there is collision, this collective, approxima uh, collective coordinate approximation ceases to work because then there is a lot of radiation uh, generated in collisions. So, so this is, uh, and we have similar results for, uh, for, 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 for four, four kings. So, uh, the ODE approximation can be done for any number of kings. However, we have not been able, so uh, we have not been able to produce solutions uh, with. Uh, higher well chains uh, longer than than five kings for a PDE because it it requires uh, fine tuning many many parameters in the initial data so we don't know how to do that okay so here is a summary so so for three and higher dimensions the solid node resolution is well understood for Two dimensions. Uh, we just uh, we are just making first steps, and and we we are happy to have this agreement with this ODE approximation numerics. Now, well, I guess the reason I was invited to this forum is that we are using hyperboloidal approach, and this is absolutely crucial in numerical computations of long time dynamics. Uh, however, uh, it is somewhat unsatisfactory that this has not been so far used as an, as an analytic tool. So it means we try to get some mathematicians interested in this approach. There are even simpler models in which we have not hyperboloidal slices, but null slices. So equations are much more simple, but, uh, but we don't know uh, how to convert it into any proof. And so there are many, many open problems here. Uh, for example, even stability, orbital stability of a single king is, is an open problem. So if we have just a solution, which is a, a single kink, and this eta corresponds to radiation. Uh, one has to understand interaction between these these two terms, which leads to some uh, PDE for eta coupled to ODE to for this 
C, this is called modulation analysis, but this has not been done yet. Okay, so I think that's all what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you.